OK, example 3. If x is normally distributed, 1, 8, 5, 15 squared, and a sample of 25 items shows a mean of 179, test whether the mean has fallen. Right, h noughts, and I am going to ask Ed to nominate somebody. Ellie, Ellie what's h naught? Yep, nothing's changed. What we're told is true. That's H naught. Okay, can you nominate somebody then for the alternative hypothesis, please? I'll come to that in a minute. Tom, alternative hypothesis? Yeah, fallen less than 185, which will mean it's a one tail test, and we're to, you're told here to use a 5% significance level. Ed, do you have a question or something at this point? I mean, it probably wouldn't have, but surely the null hypothesis would also be greater than or equal to. He, here, no. It's the way it's worded. I take, I take your point. Test whether it's fallen. The opposite of fallen is stayed the same or raised. Yep. But the, it's at 179, so it won't have been raised. But I know. I, what you're saying, the logic of what you're saying is true. But it is the null hypothesis is always this is true. There's always an equal sign in there. So there's another possibility that it has risen. We are just discounting it altogether. Yeah, there is no such thing as sort of an H2. I, I know. I know exactly where you're coming from. I know, I know exactly where you're coming from, but this is the way to do it. I take your point, though, but this is the way it's done. OK? So, next thing. Do a little diagram. Yes, you've already spotted that. Chapter 7 is errors in hypothesis testing and things. That's what I referred to a minute ago. So we've got null hypothesis 185. This is a diagram of X bar. It's a one-tail test. If it's fallen, 5%. So I'm going to have a 5% shaded area down here. My critical value will be here on my diagram. I need to know the distribution of X bar. Tom, nominate someone to tell us the distribution of X bar. Yes. He's already had to go, so nominate someone else. No, okay, ben. ben, X bar will be distributed. Uh, normally. Correct. Um, and then it's 185. Right? Yep. And then 15 squared over 25. Yep, that's right. Okay. Now, I've got here that that simplifies down to be 9. Let's save a bit of time. Normal 185, 9. So, I want to find C such that the probability that X bar is less than C is 5%. So, I can say that's going to be phi of C minus the mean over the standard deviation is 5%. Next step will be antifying. Antify a small number. Ellie, how are we going to antify 0.05? Yeah, okay. So, do a 1 minus of that one, put a minus in there. Where does it come from? Yeah. If you, if you sort of draw the curve, so if I do another little sketch, I'm going to do a bit, another bit of paper. What we had was, we want this value here, where that is 5%. Okay. What we're saying is, come up with a number over here, where that blue area is 95%, because that's naught, whatever this is, call it k, this value over here by symmetry will be minus k. Yeah. That's where that's coming from, okay? Yeah. So the rule we had was antifying something small was negative, antifying one minus that small number, okay? So antifying 0.95, if you look in the tables, it's another one you'll be familiar with, 0.95. Oh, we've come across this one already today. 1.645. 1.645.
1.645 with a minus sign. Identify the other side and rearrange and find C, which somebody's probably already done. Yep, I've got 180.065 here. So, let me zoom out a minute. That critical value there is 180.065. I had a mean given to me of 179. Well, 179, so that's over here. That's in the critical region. So... As we had our x bar being 179, which is inside the critical region, what shall we do? Yeah. Reject the null, reject h naught, which leaves us no option but to accept h1 so that is we have no option other than to accept the mean has fallen because that was our option these are binary tests one thing or the other thing nothing else the mean had fallen below the 185 okay